everybody, this is Morgana Starr, one of your fearless leaders here in Awaken Your Intuition. And I jumped on because it doesn't show me coming live, but then I find out I'm live right away. So I just start rambling on for you guys. I'm going to adjust the camera just a bit and welcome. So um, if you guys could post in the comments any questions that you have about your dreams. So I've been reading some of your uh, dreams that you've been posting on Facebook. And um, you can copy paste and stick them there again if you want. Um, but let's drive in. I'm looking down here at um, so I can do two things at once. Let's see how that works out for me. Um, yeah, multitasking is a challenge for me at times. Hi, Aoife. It was so good to talk to you today. I'm checking out dreams. Have you had some crazy dreams lately, Eva? Because um, we're noticing that with Mercury retrograde, um, it's, it's not just Mercury retrograde. It's just some of the other energies that are coming in and, and almost forcing us to bring our energy to a high level is that the dreams are coming in kind of sideways for some people uh, confusing uh, hi Deborah miss your face girl um, so they're just clearing out energy what a lot of it is some of us are even doing shadow work in our dream state um, so Eva um, what kind of weird dreams are you having? Um, and hey, Daniela, glad you're here. We're talking about dreams. Um, Lauren, she's going to tell me a dream. Yay. Um, I dreamed about being at my childhood house, and there was a flood in our yard, but with clear water. In the water was a squid first, then a white dolphin and a white snake. The white, white snake came up to me and so sweet. A lot of dreams healing high school trauma. And you know, this is really cool. I'm glad you had, you shared this. Oh, let me cross my legs. <laughs> Yay, Kirsten, for doing um, your angel numbers shadow work as well. I just told somebody today, it's really hard to do shadow work on your own. That's why we include it in our course. Um, I'm a fidgety sort, aren't I? <laughs> hey, Robin, Sally, thanks for coming. Um, but shadow works hard. And if you don't have somebody that's supporting you and holding you up, you can get very lost feeling. Um, and I noticed that um, one of our mastery students was going through some interesting things lately. And I told her, I said, don't, don't struggle with it in the future. Uh, just... Um, reach out to us so we can help give you a leg up because that, that's what we do with our students. So I want to get back to Lauren's dream. Um, flood in the yard, water, change, childhood house, the old you. When you dream about houses, a lot of times it has to do with yourself, your soul. Your house is here, your temple. How do you like my lights flickering? Um, and the soul is shown as a house in your dreams a lot of times. And the fact that you were healing these childhood memories is awesome. Um, but the squid, and then you had a white dolphin and a white snake. Of course, white's for spirit. Uh, dolphins are extremely healing. We talk about dolphins and bring in the dolphin energy and the Melchizedek method of healing that we're, we do. And we're gonna be doing that online uh, two weekends in a row in um, last of April and first of May, I think. Um, so watch for that, guys. It's it's a it's a life changer for sure. Um, and then the snake. The snake is about rebirth and awakening your spiritual powers. The Kundalini energy. I guess the spirits here like that too, because the lights are flickering. And I'm not knocking any cords about. I'm done fidgeting here for a minute. Um, so bringing all that energy of that snake, the goddess energy, is what's happening to you, Lauren. 
So you're clearing out um, some of your past. Cheryl Ann, a man chasing me and pulling me down my stairs when I was trying to climb up to get to my husband. Ooh, and I woke up screaming. I could almost feel the, the fear and the emotions there. So we get into depth with dreams in our mastery course, but we cover a little bit of that in our um, soul solution course, which is our, our starter course. But here's the thing with this. Uh, when you learn to lucid dream, Cheryl Ann, you would, can go back into that dream. And then when the guy is chasing you and trying to pull you down the stairs, you kick him in the face. You don't have to scream. You become your own rescuer. So it looks like what, what is happening now is you're reaching out to someone else um, to rescue you when you need to be your own hero. Um, Diane, uh, I've been having many wild dreams. The best ones include my mom who passed away in March. And that's really sweet. When you get a dream of someone that's crossed over and it's a peaceful dream, then it gives you some hope that life is um, temporary and things will be um, good for them and then you can have some more peace. Uh, Eva, you had several dreams that continue for a number of nights. It's like a movie that you stop and go to the next chapter. I think that's cool. Of course, we already know you're extremely gifted. So you're already naturally doing lucid dreaming because you are in control of the dreams and you are um, making uh, your reality in the dream state come into now. And what's happening because for many years I dreamed about flying and it was a process from being this far off the ground to being so high I was scared I was going to tangle in the electric lines. Uh, my dad and I used to always talk about where we flew last night. That was our breakfast table talk. Um, my mom thought we were totally nuts. Uh, and uh, for those of you that don't know, I, my dad's a preacher or was. He's do a different work on the other side right now. So um, with um, with that dream, it morphed later in the last probably 15, 20 years ago. It started going into teaching other people how to fly. And I didn't put the pieces together for, for probably a couple years. And then I realized, oh, wait a minute, I'm teaching. That's what I'm doing. I'm teaching other people how to activate their gifts and how to fly. And so that's sometimes what will happen. I'll give you the precursor. So that's cool. Keep going into that movie and uh, write your dreams down. Record them even. Deborah, having dreams of abandonment in different settings. My late husband leaving me for another woman saying I don't love you anymore or being left in um, an unfamiliar place. So definitely abandonment issues in general. And I would say most people I know have abandonment issues, um, some more than others. Um, and it sounds like because it's coming up in your dream, it's time for you to start dealing with these abandonment issues. And that comes in reprogramming your brain, your nervous system. Now, Deborah, have you taken our master class? Wanted to check to see if you've done that because it feels like it's time. And this, this is the thing, guys. We're still doing this crazy COVID dance and we're shifting into new realities. And this is a perfect time for you to get the training that you need so that when this is all said and done, you're gonna take off, you're gonna fly, you're gonna be able to help the world and become that leader that the world needs and spreading light and hope to all your clients and all your students. So this is a perfect time for training. Um, and so, and because we do it all online, 
if you're local, uh, Dana will come into the store for some of the one-on-one -on -one appointments. So um, think about that, Deborah, uh, because I know you're very gifted. Um, and make sure you watch the master class, and then let's have a little chat. Um, and you're welcome, Lauren. Eva, you wake up. Ooh, I love this one. Wake up. <laughs> I don't love it that you're hitting your husband. She wakes up hitting her husband because she's surrounded by snakes. Because <laughs> she's so afraid of them. Your poor husband. <laughs> um, the, um, the snakes are something I had to work with. Because again, I was raised in Africa and I was terrified of snakes. Because snakes bit you in Africa, you died. There were more poisonous snakes than there were non-poisonous ones there. When I came to America, I decided I needed to start getting over my fear of snakes. So we lived in the country and had a little, um, well, it was at a church camp, but we had our little garden and there would be, um, you know how they had the earthworms. So the earthworms didn't bother me, even though they're kind of snake-like. And then my dad found a nest of garter snakes. And garter snakes are really good to keep down um, uh, pest population and such like that. So we, my dad would never kill them. And we found the nest of the baby snakes. And I remember holding them in my hands and watching them thinking, I will get over my fear of them. And then when I started down this path and understanding the snake is a symbol of rebirth, and it is a symbol for the feminine divine, the goddess, because the snakes go up and down the kundalini. Um, and the kundalini is the energy up and down the middle of your spine, but they crisscross as they go up. And if you look at the staff, the medical staff, and it's called the caduceus, you'll see a staff with two snakes intertwined going to the top and angel wings. Why is that? That's in a medical journals. This is Western medicine uses the caduceus as a symbol of healing. Healing and rebirth. So when you start changing your thought process, then you become to have a healthy respect of snakes. Now, I still don't want them in my house. I found one in my um, we have our um, washing machine in our garage and I found one in the washing machine and I s took a picture of it didn't do anything with it just went and got Tim and then he it was gone by the time he got there but it was an, a non-poisonous snake so he's in the kitchen and all of a sudden he goes Margana bring me a bring me a blanket so I go to get a blanket and there was a snake there <laughs> in our hallway in our house I'm not sure it got through a vent or something and he said it was just kind of sitting with its little head up looking around but again it wasn't poisonous so we wrapped it in a blanket we took it outside so he was safe um, but that's the way healthy respect but not a fear because they they do have some good energy um, Patricia thank you for your compliments and you posted yours on Instagram. Yours was a house. In that house, those people were killing everyone. Remember fighting and killing the last person, driving out there with another survivor as about out of hell. You know what? That sounds like some of the dreams I've had. And the reason you're having those dreams and you're having them now, again, has to do with the awakening process. And that's what's important what you guys these dreams are happening in intensity right now because your whole soul is vibrating and going wake up this matrix we're living in isn't real we need to create the reality that we really want wake up and so they're bringing these dreams to us to show us what we're supposed to be doing with um with the rescuing aspect. So Patricia, this is telling me very clearly that you are not a light worker. You are a light warrior. You are one of the angel ninjas that need trained. You are special forces 
You know, you, your soul many lifetimes has done this work where you go in and you rescue people and you bring them out and keep them safe. And many lifetimes you probably did that kind of work. This lifetime you're supposed to do it on a spiritual level. But it can be very, very dangerous. I could tell you horror stories of people that aren't careful. But all you have to do is kind of watch how people are. Um, you know, some of these paranormal shows, they, they like to do bait the ghost, so to speak. Uh, and it's not nice. And so then they get in trouble and they get physically hit. And other things like that will happen to them. So it is something you want to be careful about, but you're definitely gifted, Patricia. Hi, Esther. Um, I think I caught everybody. Lizzie, hi. Um, and here's your dream. I usually remember my dreams vividly. I used to lucid dream a lot, but now recently I've been having colorful, bright, wild dreams, but I'll only remember very little of it. A glance, an image, a person, color screen, schemes. It's a strange change. Miss your adventure dreams and you want to get back to that somehow. I've got to pop that third eye open. They're telling me there's some physical things that you're doing and you're, you just don't even know that that's closing your third eye. I mean, people in the spiritual field, they do know fluoride uh, blocks your third eye. Uh, some medications block your third eye. There's other things of that nature. But they're just saying you're kind of at a you've been at a standing pattern for a while so now it's time to just pop open Reiki will definitely definitely open that third eye the Reiki from us I can't speak for other people's Reiki but I do know that we've reattuned a lot of people that have gotten Reiki elsewhere Dana and I are third generation from Dr. Asui our Reiki master's Reiki master was Mrs. Asui so it's a powerful lineage that will pop that third eye wide open. And with the training we give you, you'll learn how to balance your uh, energies and how to protect yourself. Um, and then that your dreams will get crazy again. Um, and so that would be a good step. Again, check our master class because um, it, when you're ready to really do some in-depth training. We've actually increased our time on the master class to 12 weeks because we were kind of letting people stay a little longer anyway and found out that they really needed that extra time. So it's a powerful transformational course and it will help your dream stay to pop your third eye open because you got to release some trauma. And that's what your dreams are trying to do right now is releasing trauma so you've got room for the new stuff to come in. My lights are just having so much fun. Um, I always like to debunk everything. Nope, there's no cord anywhere near my chair. And my floor is very steady. So, oh well, it's the ghosties. Um, Connie, um, dream, she dreams of German Shepherds. Um, German Shepherd type dog outside with guests and the guests discover he ate their baby. Ah, that's not nice. Most dreams I can make some sense of it. This was odd and different. And odd in, in the different emotions I had with that, with what was happening. And that's, that's very uh, normal to have some weird emotions with dr dreams. Um, document them. And some dreams, you know, just kind of stay with you. Some you forget really quickly. That's why we say keep a dream journal notebook by your bed. Write it down before you get out of bed. So let me see what this is. I wanna, I'm asking Anel because my brain doesn't know. That's why I like working with an angel. Um, the German Shepherd dog ate the fertility. So it wasn't the baby. The baby represented fertility, new beginnings, and was kind of blocking that. It almost feels like this dog at this point is not, because um, I love dogs, and I, 
I love German Shepherds. Don't tell Athena that, please. She's a little bit Sean that thinks she's queen of the world. Um, so the, the German Shepherd dog is about protection, but when I, I'm keying into this, again, it's almost like you have the power to call that dog off. Uh, and that goes into the lucid dreaming. Right before you go to bed, it, someone must have told Athena. Did you hear her knocking at the door? And the door is actually, she could push it open. Um, I got a letter in, sorry. Not that I spoil her or anything like that. Um, and hang on, guys. Not that my world revolves around my little fur children, especially that one. Uh, oh, and she just wanted to come in to make her point. And I made my hair so beautiful. All right, we're gonna ignore that. I wanna get back to this dog. Connie, it just feels like you can go back right before you go to sleep, ask the angels uh, to show you that dream again. And then you're gonna have the power to uh, get past it. Um, power to control the dog. We forget sometimes in our dreams that we do have that power. And that's one thing I learned at one time was the lucid dreaming part is I would pull the energy back and I wanted to save people so I would just do a scooping motion with my hand and houses would actually literally rise above a flood of water so um, start playing with that a little bit uh, hi Mary I'm glad you made it on and hi Joe Esther wild dreams every night well we know you're gifted it's time for you to take it to the next level um, Becky recently that I get birth to child and that was very vivid and again children represent in dreams especially they represent fertility and so that means that you're going to have um, um, new things happening to you new business new opportunities um, Becky, are you in? You need to join our Soul Solution course. This would be a new birthing for you because a lot of people are starting to join the course so that they can become um, full time psychic mediums or part time psychic mediums and get paid for it. Um, so I really recommend that this is the time, guys. Get your training now. Um, but that's what they're telling me about you, Becky. Your gifts run deep. So the dreams are coming in just trying to get your attention that it is time for you to make an impact on the world, on yourself, on your family, and on everyone else. Uh, David, I, I get this, you constantly dream of saving people. And I, I felt your energy before, David, you are very gifted. And being able, for a man to be in touch with his intuition, which you are, having these dreams and stuff, is a very powerful thing. And as a, a woman that works with the energy of Archangel Nell, the Feminine Divine, I can totally honor that in you. Because it really is harder for men to take that mm, male, woo, 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 beat the chest ego thing and put it aside and bring in the feminine for themselves and to help other people because it's a really a balance of the both. You need both of that, whether you're male or female. Our society has almost demonized men that were in touch with their feminine side. And the best psychics I have known that are men are usually gay. And I know that's not you, and that, and we have, oh my gosh, we have a, one of our students, it blows Dana and I away at times with some of his intuition and the messages he's given, and he's happily married, wife, kids, and um, so, but he's not afraid of that feminine side within him, and that brings him power. 
That's all my rambling, David, is to give you honor and respect. And uh, maybe you want to look into a little bit of getting some of your training. Um, and you know we're here to help you watch the master class. And hi, Patricia. Oh, you are you were saying thank you. Um, Robin, I had a dream, a house dream, that was pretty weird last week. I'm now living with my boyfriend in a very special house for the last eight years. In my dream, we were in my tiny house that was foreclosed on a few years ago. My boyfriend and I had gone to this tiny house in that I used to own, along with B of A. It appeared that it belonged to my boyfriend. All my belongings were there as if I hadn't moved out. I'm not sure where we went or how much time had passed, but my boyfriend decided to give the house away to a billionaire friend. All I could think about was moving all over that crap again. <laughs> okay, that's a pretty clear message. Get rid of your crap. One of our mastery students was just saying that she uh, is going through her closets, she's going through everything, she's clearing out old stuff, getting rid of it, throwing away, donating, and she's already feeling more positive energy coming in. If you live with clutter, it is going to be heavy. And if you're concerned about moving stuff, you probably don't need it. So it's like they're wanting you to clear out inside the crap that we've held on to with trauma, past life, inner child, um, all of that stuff. So there's both of those things. Because again, it was house, so it was spirit. So do it on a physical level and do it on a spiritual level and start really diving into that. Hi, Christine. And you're welcome, Eva, about the snakes. Uh, Betty, my husband had a dream recently where he is being attracted by a mountain lion and he was trying to fight it off with no weapons. I touched his shoulders to calm him down it still bothers him because it was so vivid so this is uh putting me in mind and this is what anel does the angel i work with she'll t she'll remind me of someone else that went through something similar because this is the truth for you so my friend was being uh chased by panthers and it took her a while to finally realize, I mean, she's terrified. And every time when they get ready to grab her, then she'd wake up. Finally, she decided she was not going to make herself wake up. So when the Panthers got to her in her dream, they started rubbing all around her, loving on her. Uh, so they were just her spirit guides. And that's what I got instantly with your husband, Betty is the mountain lion is a guide of his and angels will come in the form of animals because we understand the animal traits so what i would recommend so you could help your husband out a little bit uh go on google and put the spiritual meaning of mountain lion and see what traits that has that connect with him and what he needs in his life right now so hopefully that helps Robin, I trained myself not to remember my dreams when I was a child because of severe nightmares. I do not remember many dreams, but when I do, they're pretty vivid. So nightmares come because you need clearing. And if they're too disturbing, then you definitely need a clearing. Um, and we'll block ourselves because we're conditioned to run from fear. Um, I love the saying, feel the fear and do it anyway. So that's where we have to shift uh, our thinking around that. Vicki, I rarely can recall any dream. I'm not one who sleeps maybe more longer than four or five hours a night. Um, I wonder if it's because I'm so tired I don't remember. I hear we all dream related to such a sense of peace that I don't remember. So, um, I'm just getting more that your third eye is blocked. It's not fully awoken. Reiki will help you a lot. Not just with your third eye opening and remembering your dreams, but it'll help you with sleeping. Um, 
there's some other things going on you might need a clearing as well to help you sleep better um, there's some past life energy coming in that is making it afraid almost like your body's afraid to go to sleep because you're going to get killed when you're asleep because that happened in another lifetime um, so that's part of uh, what I see would happen um, And Natalia, our wonderful manager, is on here chattering away. Hi, Avarice and Elena. Nice to see you, Darian. Um, I feel like I may have met a guide in heaven another night, but like Lizzie, I haven't been able to remember my dreams lately. Let me give you guys a trick. So here's what I want you to do is um, I want you to, um, right before you go to sleep, kind of in a twilight state, ask Archangel and now, and you don't have to know a lot about her, she's a feminine divine, she'll work with all of you, ask her what you are, um, ask her about when she, right before you go to sleep, I'm sorry, I'm getting distracted by some of the other comments, because my my brain's going faster than my mouth can. Um, ask it now to put a pyramid of protection over yourself and then put another one over your astral body right before you go to sleep. And then ask her also to help you remember your dreams. And right before you wake up, or right as you wake up, not before, wake up, grab your pen, write it down, if you have your phone nearby, record it. Say the dream aloud, even if there's no one to hear you because it kind of gets in your brain, and then write it. So that's going to be very powerful for you to help you go that next step. And David, I love you're coming down to Florida. So send me a, a PM and let me know when you may be stopping in the shop because I'm not there every day and neither is Dana, and I'd love to meet you in person. Uh, so I can see if I can arrange my schedule to pop in and see you, even though I'll be wearing my space helmet. Um, I have to take extra precautions due to, um, due to things here at home. So, Alina, not very memorable lately. Avarice, so far I haven't had wild dreams. New energy renewal, feeling spring around the corner, yes. Um, why, Elena, why would my angels be holding back and helping me? Angels are only going to help if you have a relationship with them and you talk to them. We can't just expect them to just pop in. And here's why. The angels we work with are all about free will. And they're not going to take that free will from you. And if they're interfering and they're trying to help you with something when you didn't ask for help, that's taking your free will. That's why I don't tell people things I know about them unless they've asked. They, if people don't ask the question, they're not going to listen for the answer. So the angels are the same way. And Elena, uh, maybe you can type in what, who the angel is you work with because that may make a difference too. And I'll, I'll look for that. And Dara, Dara is my twin. I'm so glad you're here. You look so gorgeous on Facebook. Um, I miss you. Um, you've been having crazy dreams the last two days. Yeah, a lot of energies. You're a very strong, powerful, medium, psychic, and healer. And it's going to kick up. It's going to get more intense. It's not going to get less. So, um, time for you to get your training and put your mantle on and do your superpowers. Dara is incredible. I'm not going to talk about you anymore, Dara, because I'm going to cry because I miss you so much and I love you so much. Um, and I'm crying, so that didn't work. <laughs> um, Elena, need assistance in two major areas. I've invited them and I'm confused, but who, what's the name of the angel that you've asked? Or are you asking all the angels? Okay, Raphael and Michael, that's the problem. So, 
don't ask them anymore. They're actually, they're obviously not helping you. Um, I would ask a no. And all my clients that have done that, she will bring in the angel you need or she will come in herself and take care of the problem. And Nell is the energy of the feminine divine. She's mama. She is incredible. And um, Archangel Michael and Raphael will both bow to her because she's way above their status. Um, and so it's time for you to up your angel game. Bring a nail in. Have her symbol there. Use the pyramid of protection. Um, and I think we'll, we'll post that in the video if you don't have it. Um, or in the lines too. So, um, Michael and Raphael are great, uh, as we call them starter angels, and I started working with them, and then they weren't strong enough to help me with the work I was doing. And actually, Michael told me, ask an L, because I'm not dealing with that. So, I just went straight to her. And Elena, you know what? You saying, I need a mama right now, that is why she's coming in so strong right now. I would say probably 90% of our clients uh, have um, mother issues, wounded um, issues with their mom. Um, and that is, um, that energy is where Anel comes in and starts doing some healing. Because she is that tough mama love and she's that other powerful um, angel that will protect and she'll comfort and she'll love you and put her wings around you. So um, we'll, we'll make sure we post that information on the Pyramid of Protection for you. Darian, uh, what do you know about working with Metatron? I'm a fan of Metatron. Um, Metatron, I wouldn't say fan. Metatron's a fan of me, except that I talk nice about him because he is the angel of sacred geometry, of uh, technical things. Information will come from inventions from Metatron. He works very closely with Anel, Azrael, and Kahara. I have channeled him many times for clients, and I love doing that with him. But he's a no nonsense angel. And he'll work with you for a time. And then if you don't stick with it, um, he'll leave. He's done with you. So um, we have one of our students that graduated the Soul Solution course that gets new symbols from Metatron and works very closely with Metatron. And he's in the, um, as I say, thinking field. I think he's in finances, but it's like the numbers and stuff like that. So Metatron's awesome. I uh, love him. And David, you're a huge fan of Raphael. Raphael is a great angel. He's like, um, again, a kind of a starter angel, angel from um, about healing. But I've never met a more powerful angel of healing than Anel. Because um, usually I get the rough cases. Um, but Raphael, remember the names of angels. There's hundreds and thousands of angels. Okay? Just, cool. And so those few that we know, we know them from the Bible that was written by a patriarchal system trying to squash out the intuition, free will, and the feminine divine, which is all about intuition and free will. So that's why we know these names. Sometimes, like, and I'm getting with you, David, the Raphael you're talking about is not that particular Raphael. Again, you know, Susie here, Susie here, Susie here, and all these Susies have different personalities. So that's why if you Google Anel, you'll get Haniel, and that's not the Anel we're talking about. It's a different Anel. Same thing with you, David. This is a different Raphael. This is a higher level Raphael. And he feels like he's very connected to Anel's group. And he's used that name so that you would be able to identify with him. 
And with you feeling drawn to him, that means you are a powerful healer. And being a healer has its blessings and it has its curses. Because being an empath, you know what happens to us, right? Little things. Um, so, Elena, no issues, just need that shoulder since past, yes. I understand that when you've had your mom pass and you wanted someone to talk to, she's physically not there. So, Avarice, you say, Kids of America music li lyrics have been coming up so strongly, I can't seem to get it out of my head. So I'm taking it from a sign from spirit. And that's true, that's what we should do. If you, something keeps rattling around in your head, we need to, um, differ, we need to pay attention. And yeah, our limited understanding and lost knowledge from the ages. And that, that's what it is. There's so much that we don't have written down and we don't have the proper history for. And remember, uh, the victor writes the history. And uh, the ones that wrote the history um, were male-dominated energies. And even in the New Testament, even though Jesus was very open to women and um, teaching and, and such with women, but the, the others um, were not. Jimmet just distracted me with his love, love, love you. I love you, Jimmet, one of my soulmates. Um, we've had at least one, maybe two past lives together. It's so much fun when you uncover these past lives with people, even though it's usually traumatic for a minute because of uh, the death scene. I always remember the death part first. Um, but yeah, there's a lot of information out there that we don't know. Oh, I was going to talk about in the New Testament, like Paul the Apostle that wrote a lot of books in the New Testament was women keep silent, women aren't to teach. Uh, there's to be subservient to men and that was all his thinking that wasn't Jesus's teaching so the Bible's quite you know you got to take some of that with a grain of salt um, my brother that's a minister I uh, accidentally called him a Christian I didn't think it was a bad thing he goes don't you call me that I'm not one of those he goes I'm a follower of Jesus and uh, so I can have a lot of respect for someone like that um, so love you guys. Um, let me know how I can help you and um, watch the masterclass. And I'm going to post a link here on a clearing and protecting your energy. And that has the pyramid of protection in it. And um, then just start talking to Anel and let's get the next step going. All right. Love you all. Talk to you soon. Bye.